right, here we go. Cake interview uh, with Wybot. Welcome, Toma. Did I get that right, Toma? Tamir, yeah, no, I Tamir. answered it. Oh, damn it. Aussies always get that stuff wrong. <laughs> no, no worries, man. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Tamir, thanks, man. Well, we're just jamming really quickly, and it was really fun, so I thought, let's get this recording started so we can uh, make this <laughs> interview as fun as possible. Uh, look, why we do these interviews is to help other founders um, learn about how to do their cap tables right. Like, it's a super complex thing. We also want to, I guess, promote why we think cake is awesome and not just be us going cake is awesome. Like it's nice to get people on that have used it and also used competitive products and, and you know, hear from them why they think it's great. Um, we'll try and keep it relaxed for you all. Uh, I'm definitely going to learn a bit about Tamer and why. Tamer's in Miami now. We're just jamming on that. You were saying uh, tons of investment happening there, man. That's That's pretty cool. Tons of it. Yeah, this place is popping. Uh, it's, uh, it is unbelievable. This place is growing a lot. I think you'll see this become one of the major hubs in the US in a few years. It's just, yeah, everything's moving here. I'm excited to get there. I think the Miami is kind of like the big brother of the Gold Coast where Cake grew up. And so there's a lot of similarities. Uh, when I'm in the US, I hang out a lot in LA and Santa Monica, Venice area. And so I can see those three regions going together, you know, really well. Um, and they don't believe they didn't believe in the pandemic over there. That, that was it, right? That's why it's having a real heyday. Yeah. So, um, so during COVID, uh, Florida was one of the only states that didn't lock the, lock anything down during COVID, and a lot of um, Silicon Valley and New York tech companies and VCs were locked in their homes in the cold, and everyone just decided, screw it, we just moved to Miami. Or Florida in general, and, and you got um, the weather, you got great weather. I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, no, great. It's like hot all year round. I mean, yeah, there's an occasional occasional hurricane or something. Hurricane, right? <laughs> yeah, there's an occasional hurricane. But if you can deal with that, it's uh, it's all good. It is a awesome. it is a vibe. Every um, uh, every stereotype you've ever heard of Miami is true. It is wild. Nice, love it. Can't wait to get there. The East Coast. So yeah, it'll be one of my one of my upcoming trips. So all right. So we're gonna talk a bit about why Bob. We're gonna talk about why you switched from Carter to Cake, right? We're gonna talk a bit about, you know, your capital raises and how you're doing your stock options and international stock options as well. I think is on the table maybe soon. So I think it's gonna be really interesting for anyone who's listening. Don't switch off. Um, it's gonna be great. Um so let's start with why, but, um, I've got like a intro sentence here, but I'm going to let you do it. So tell us what is why, but, what's the mission? Um, yeah, what's going on? Yeah. You won't learn much about us online. We've been in stealth mode for a while. Uh, so, uh, and we're just about to relaunch with our new messaging, our new brand, everything web presence. So awesome. why, why, is, uh, an AI in the ear of deskless workers. In essence, um, you can think about work as either being desk-based or deskless. So 20% of the world work at a desk, 80% don't. So these are logistics drivers, clinicians, field technicians, people who work in retail, manufacturing, hospitality, oil and gas, you name it. There's so many people in the world that don't work at a desk. Did in you come plant, up with that term, deskless workers? I haven't heard of that before. No, it's we didn't. We can't lay claim to that one, but we absolutely took ownership of it. That's for sure. I think it'll grow. I think it'll grow. Just thinking about what AI can do and how AI can start to take, you know, some of the more time-consuming elements away from people's day-to-day work. I think the the percentage of deskless workers is probably a growing trend. Anyway, let's move on. <laughs> absolutely a growing trend, and I think COVID really helped with that. But some uh, some uh, jobs are inherently deskless, right? So, for example, a logistics driver is never sitting in front of their laptop in an office, right? It's just never going to happen. And so the primary issue is that they're all issued a device, right? They're all issued a device. And they say, uh, they're told, keep your eyes and hands on the job. But also at the same time, everything you need to do your work is on this device. So there's this kind of fundamental disconnect between deskless employees and the technology that they're given to use. So that industry in particular, deskless industry, the whole deskless workforce is uh, in essence, really kind of struggling in a way because there's not a lot of technology out there to help people who are out in the field. So Wybot is in essence, a voice AI that deploys situational awareness, situational intelligence to these deskless employees in the front line. 
So for example, let's say you're a field worker or a field technician uh, and you come in and you've been asked to fix something and you've seen an error code, you don't know what it means. You say, hey, Wirebot, what does this error code mean? Not only will Wirebot guide you about what to do, it'll also document everything in, in, in real time. Awesome. Um, Love that. Yeah, Especially but- if you're driving, like you don't want to be taking your eyes off the road. I'm recently doing a lot of K's and you've got your sort of maps up here, but you, if your phone can be really delivering you high quality information um, and so you can keep your, your eyes on the job, like, wow, that's, that's like incredible. Mm. It's awesome. Uh, I mean, in an electrical that, engineer, like you're doing electrical work, like you want to be ultra focused, right? You don't want to be sort of going backwards and forwards, putting the tools down, coming back. I mean, that's that's a huge pain in the butt, I'm sure, and it's risky. A huge, it's a huge pain in the butt, and also the the my, the main issue is that a lot of the work that deskless workers do has to be documented thoroughly because there's a lot of yeah. compliance obligations. There's a lot of processes. Oh, so much. Do- I'm thinking about teachers as well. Like teachers say like, oh my goodness, the compliance now. I've got no time with my kids. You know, like they're going to be back doing, filling forms in and stuff. Look, yeah, it's awesome, man. It, a lot of this stuff, um, a lot of this stuff that um, that these deskless workers have to do, it's impossible to enforce that when uh, an incident is taking place, for example, right? And so by having Wirebot in your back pocket, you're actually able to say, hey, Wirebot, I've had an incident. What do I do? And Wirebot is able to personalize that guidance based on who you are, what vehicle you're in, for example, where you're located, what the weather's like. Um, and at the same time, what it's doing is it's streaming this information to the back office and automating all of the documentation, all of the reports that need to take place. So previous to Wirebot, a lot of this stuff used to be memory-based or scraps of paper-based. Um, and we've essentially brought law and order to, um, to uh, an industry or variety of industries who have never had that type of technology take place so we're super love proud it. of what we're doing love it oh you should be and the timing right they always think timing is such a big factor this feels like something where the timing is just like bang on yeah. <laughs> we, were, we were we were in ai before it was cool uh and so now that, it's, you, now that you just want to be like a few years ahead and then exactly now that it's cool like we've kind of you know We've got our own kind of voice AI that's like doing some pretty awesome stuff. So, so let me uh, just check. You didn't just put AI on your website the other day, did you? I'll have to check this for the people at home. Like, how long have you been so, doing AI? Like, tell me honestly. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, with my co-founder, I mean, we've been in, we've been. I mean, my co-founder's way more advanced in AI. He's been in there forever. He's been doing computer vision. He's a he's doing his PhD in natural language processing. All but, right, all right. I believe you. I believe you. <laughs> well, we've, been working, we've been working together for a decade. Um, so pre, like Sick. prior to what we were together for a couple of years before we founded this thing. Congrats, man. I really love it. And you, you recently raised around. So let's get into some equity stuff. Uh, a big part of, you know, your equity is raising around. Like you get your cap table right. You got to think dilution. You got to get the right investors in. You got term sheets. And, you know, like it's, it's a bit of a thing. It's, it's like pretty hectic. Um, let's talk a bit about your round. Uh, was it your seed round or was it? Series A or which round was it? Seed. Yeah. That was seed. a seed. Uh, and so we is were, it like public? How much you raised? Yeah, yeah, we raised three mil US. Um, nice. And, seed. and uh, who'd you get? What's that? Who'd you get? Who's who's leading? Who, who's, who's, oh, who's Florida funders? That's actually why I'm here. That's why I'm in Florida. <laughs> cool. Uh, yeah. So they um, they actually took up our whole round pretty much. We got there's another. Wow. All fund here called 305 Ventures who um, took a little bit of that round as well, but um, but yeah, we're super grateful for uh, course, for that. It's amazing. Because Florida always- funders. It sounds like a like a, an angel group, or is it kind of like a tight sort of LP group that are operating as a fund, or so what's that one? Yeah, they've got both. They've got their own fund plus an angel group. They're the I think they're the longest established VC in Florida. Awesome. And, uh, yeah, look, and it's uh, it's an interesting one because um, when we were uh, when we were raising, I didn't realize that we were going to raise in uh, in Florida. We were just going to raise in the U.S. We were always going to be in a, like we had registered Wirebot in the U.S. to begin with, so we knew we would end up here. We knew we would raise here. Um, it just so happens that when we did, it ended up being in Florida, and it was October, <laughs> and now I'm here in Miami. So that awesome, was awesome, uh, man. The startup awesome. life. That's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, and and like with the with the raise, obviously 
pitching, closing. I mean, that's always super gnarly and fun and highs and lows. And let, let's, you know, for the for the listeners, if they're trying to learn about the cap table and how, how cake works and, and that journey, let's dig into that a little bit. So I know that you were with Carter, I think, at and then you switched to cake. Did you switch before the raise or after the raise? Let's just get like a little bit of a timeline going. Yeah, look, it, it's an interesting one. So pre- previous to this round, we actually had an, uh, like a pre-seed round, a couple of pre-seed rounds back when I was in, in Australia, back when I was yep. based in Sydney. Pretty normal, and, uh, yep. and that was managed by with spreadsheets. So we had, uh, you know, it was like, okay, well, we have a company, what the valuation is. Uh, here's all the angels that are participating him with here's how much they're they're taking and we had some i would say spreadsheet science going on uh, you should have used cake for that but i'll let you off <laughs> <laughs> well, back, back then i uh we we weren't actually, that advanced we might not have actually been around either so yeah that's cool. yeah, this was yeah this is probably a solid two years ago um, cool so like talking about two years ago so yeah so so we kind of uh you know, we were basically spreadsheet warriors uh, with our the cap table back in the angel rounds. But once we were raising our seed, we kind of had to get a bit serious. And um, a lot of the advice was to jump on with your competitor. Um, and so, you know, you do what you do. You jump on with the competitor. Um, and honestly, like... That was an great- Australian cap table, right? So, like, ASIC and all that. Yeah. Yeah, that, well, it was an American cap table. Uh, but... It was an American cap table. Oh, that makes sense. A couple of years ago, we weren't in America, so everybody would have yeah. been saying, saying um, Carter. That totally makes sense. We've been yeah. in the US now for about a year or two, year and a half. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's it's funny because, like, when we onboarded, everything's great. Like I said, that it's a it's a good product. It's, you know, there's there's nothing wrong with it, actually. It's, it's actually really good. Um, the primary issue that we... Uh, ran into was the fact that we're a distributed workforce and we're distributed around the world. We've got team members everywhere. And Carter's really good for America. Really good. Like it's solid as a product. But once you start wanting to issue um, stock or manage stock um, such as ESOP outside of jurisdictions that it supports, you run into some problems. And so um if it wasn't for that, we'd probably still be using it. But to be honest, once we discovered that um, Cake was able to help us not only manage um, kind of ESOP for uh, for our employees in, say, the US, but the fact that, you know, we've got employees distributed all the way around um, Europe, which I'll explain a little bit more about that. Um, we wanted everybody at Ybot to participate. And these, you know, some of the people that we've on We love that. Some of the people that we onboarded have never been issued stock in their life, right? And this is pretty phenomenal because so primarily we hire uh, Ukrainians and Russians who are essentially leaving that scenario that's going on right now. And um, that's so cool. They are phenomenal, phenomenal at what they do. Um, and you know, politics aside, none of them really care about what's going on there. They just want to work and and be oh. free. It seems and like so, a political thing. I mean, most people just want to live a great life and, and not be part of a war, right? Anyway, let's not get too political, but yeah. No, no, absolutely. And so when you've got um, staff that are continuously switching jurisdictions, so we've got an office based out of um, Lisbon and Portugal. That's our engineering HQ. Oh, we and, do too. Oh, there you go. That's similarities everywhere. Uh so what we do is we, you know, we have this um, almost like a probation period. And, you know, once they pass that, then they are offered uh, an ability to get a visa to work in Portugal. Oh, awesome. so we've got this, this kind of constantly, almost like this migrating workforce. We needed a way to, I would say, elegantly manage our, our stock options in a way that um, wasn't going to be complicated and i think the the cool part about cake and the reason why we actually switched is we can do that all in one piece of software and that's honestly why we switched and to be honest it's been <laughs> awesome so we've obviously migrated our cap table there um you know we've got different different types of stock options that we issue to like for example the board versus uh you know employees 
And uh, yeah, look, like I said, it's been it's been something that I actually really enjoy using a lot. No, amazing. It's always interesting to hear, you know, from people what the trigger is because changing software is not something people want to do often, especially changing software for something that's as complicated as your cat table. So I totally appreciate once you got it sorted, you're not that inclined to switch. Um, but when you're trying to solve, like you're going from one company, one country to like multiple countries, like that's a big problem. And if you can't do that in one place, like that is enough of a trigger to make a change. Um, we have heard of some other triggers to make those changes from other founders, but, you know, really interesting to hear, you know, that that was, I guess, the the reason for you. And um, so you've got multiple countries now and you sort of run each pool like a little bit separately. So you can have like a pool for the board and like a pool for Portugal and, you know, a pool for the different countries, stuff like that. Yeah, cool. Yeah, so we've got we've got um I think we've got three pools running, and then we've got uh like a phantom option scheme as well that's running on the back of that. And I saw that I saw that um cake is releasing, or maybe they've already yeah. done it, some kind of phantom feature. We've got the fan, we've got a pretty good hack at the moment with the phantom, which I think Shannon has run you through, and then it's the yep. top. I think it's the top priority for us this quarter to to build out the to make it like a real feature, so it's not a bit hacky, like it's actually like a real phantom um run phantom right. plans because as you know like if you've got five ten countries some countries equity rules are so complicated like it's, it's pretty much impossible to do actual equity um That's you know true. especially if you've got to do 10 different countries and one one or two of them are just like diabolical like the rules in that country but at least kate can say hey like these ones are fine this one's a bit hard these two are diabolical we'll probably run a phantom plan like at least you know, with Kate, we can help you with all that. Uh, which I think is just wonderful to empower companies that want to have real global remote teams, right? Which is a huge advantage uh, for accessing talent, and or even if you are like really trying to help people from disaffected countries, or perhaps trying to have talent in countries where your customers are based on time zone, or whatever you're trying to do. You know, like so many founders are trying to build these global teams right now. It's true, and again, you know, if you don't have all your team in one location. Um, it's an absolute logistical nightmare to manage. <laughs> totally is. Imagine you had to have lawyers in five countries or six countries and then like have a spreadsheet with all that and like, oh my God. It's funny. We actually found payroll software that actually does that, that has lawyers in every country that you operate in just to make sure that the contracts are up to date. And we couldn't think of a, of a bigger logistical nightmare. So the fact that, you know, we can have our payroll in one place and our options and cap table in our phantom pool and another place it's just clean just i like some two totally no that's 100 percent. that's music to our ears that's why we built it like you know not to over share but like that's why we originally we were we just saw this ourselves we're like an australian company expanding globally we needed an advisor in the us we needed an advisor in india and they wanted to have their stock options issued correctly and we were like what does that mean? And then we looked and we're like, so we need a stock option plan in the US and we need one in, in India. We need attorneys and we need like tax advisors in each country. And we were like, what the heck? It's wild. You know? And that was a while ago now, of course. And then we were like, well, this is a cool problem to solve. And then we just went and like just started chipping away at all these countries and, and productizing it and building the offer letters into the product. And it's just so wonderful to see people like yourself now you know, enjoying that and the benefiting from that and being able to help empower your business is, is look, awesome from, and from I, my perspective. Look, and I've got to say, look, uh, you know, it's funny because like when you when you start to use uh, software like Cake, and I'm not paid by you guys, I pay you. <laughs> yeah, let's like, clarify yeah. that. No payments are occurring. I, I'm hoping to buy your beer, but that's, that's just for fun. <laughs> <laughs> I think because um, there's so many great features in that platform that it, it can be relatively overwhelming, even if you know what you're looking for. It's um, you've got some really great people on your on your side. So we've been working really closely with Shannon, and I got to say, she's an absolute legend. Um, you know, I'm pretty sure I harassed the shit out of her when we were onboarding, and uh, you know, she probably needed a holiday from me at that point. But she's currently on holiday. <laughs> 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 I'm sure it wasn't you. I'm sure it wasn't you. Uh, I'm, I'm sure it wasn't me. But no, she was. Um, you know, her, her. I think the depth of her product knowledge that made it. That made the experience. I think for especially for me and the you know legal team and co-founder, like everyone kind of had to be involved there, and it was just yeah. pretty seamless. And I think yeah, it comes down to people. So 
that's that's a testament. I really love hearing that. And, you know, from my perspective, just to reiterate that, like with your cap table, it is a beast of things, you know, and but what order do you do them in? And some of the things that you think are big and not big, if you've got an expert there by your side, just to say, hey, we're going to do them in this order. These ones are probably important. These ones are not important. And you've got, you, as you say, you've got yourself there, your co-founder, maybe your legal counsel or your external lawyer or whatever. They're all on the call. And everybody just goes from like a little bit hectic to like, okay, everything's yeah. cool now and we can work through this. And, Absolutely. you know, with that, that's a huge, huge like part of it, eh? I actually just remembered our onboarding process. We had this, <laughs> we had this really solid uh, cap table that was um, that our lead investors put together. It was a piece of art. But if I was having to kind of translate what was in there and put into software, I would probably still be there today. And uh, I, said, I said, hey, Shannon, uh, we got this uh, spreadsheet. What can you do about it? <laughs> the next day, everything's Damn. okay. It was awesome. They're, they're amazing. They're amazing, that, that team. Absolutely. Um, what else should we chat about? Like, are there, what about we can dig into, um, yeah, so obviously international expansion, that's a challenge. We talked about that. We talked about the complexity of it and just like, you know, having experts use it is one thing, but then having a layman go and like really use it, have, have to actually do it is like way too hectic. So I suppose just the complexity of it is another challenge. Um, uh, what about like when you're raising capital? Is there a challenge or two in there that you sort of came across? Um, what else can we bring out for people that, that sort of highlight a couple of you know cap table challenges that you've had? I think it, maybe not so much challenges, but what I really love, um, there's a tool in there that allows you to model um, your kind of future rounds. So outside of the fact that, you know, when you are issuing stock to your staff and they can model themselves like oh here's what happens when this thing becomes a unicorn uh, <laughs> the, other, the other cool thing about this is that um, you're able to plan your subsequent rounds really nicely and i think this is a really cool tool because uh we're currently in the in the process of planning a series a we're taking our sweet time with it this year but um the ability to um, determine at different valuations the type of say funds that you're looking to raise versus what happens to the cap table at that point is really nice it's a really nice thing to literally continue to iterate on mm. you know is where we think we're going to be by the end of this year you know and uh, based on our needs for the next three years is what we're thinking of raising and this is what the impact is on the cap table that's really beautiful it's almost like a I don't know. It's almost like a fun tool to use almost because you can just... Absolutely. Get... You can like think into the future. You can put a few numbers in. You can see what might happen. Have you tried to do that in a spreadsheet? Like I've done that many times in a spreadsheet before we built that modeling tool and it is gnarly. It's the... Like yeah, you change one number and you have to go change all the other numbers and then you break it and then you have to go back to your accountant and then like they have to fix it and they send it back to you like four days later. Like it is the worst process in the world. But like yeah. with the modeling tool that we have, because of all the calculations that are happening in the background, you know, you can just change a few numbers and it just gives you all the outcomes. Uh, yeah, like that's pretty, that's pretty sexy. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I really it's agree pretty, with that. It is really cool. I think yeah. the other great thing about this is the confidence that you have around diligence at that point. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, once you've got your house in order with like your accounts are like, spot on you've got like all your legals lined up everything's kind of nice it's almost like the final frontier is to make sure that everything in your cap table is accurate and you know you can show the journey of impact that say your pre-seed round had your seed round and where you're going to go yeah. the, the story that you could actually put together uh, with relative ease when you're planning that i think it's there's a lot to be said about it. It's it's kind of uh it's almost investing in your own sanity at that level. So it's it's yeah. It's, yeah. It hugely helps you with investors to to put your best foot forward and and they always ask you questions and then you don't have to go again through a whole rigmarole of putting all the data together. You log in and you can just take a little screenshot and ping it off to them and be be confident that, that everything's up to date. I've done that quite a few times myself and um it's it's a it's a cool it's a cool feeling so 
Hey, look, um, I, I literally couldn't have asked for more. Um, I think you've, you've, uh, yeah, like it's it's great to see you're sort of a power user. You know, like you, you care about this stuff. You're really good at it. You know, you're, you're using your cap table in a pretty powerful way, and you're you're building your company with it. You're building culture with it. You're creating real value in the world with your ethos. You know, you're communicating you know well with it with your investors, and you know, I just love to see you know founders. Being on top of things and um, using the the cap table in the right way, it's a pretty powerful tool. So, like, good on you, man, and and thanks, I guess, for sharing how you think Cakes helped you on that journey. We really appreciate you doing that, and we really appreciate you choosing us, and and we're really grateful for that. Um, so just to finish up at Cake, um, you know, we're big on you know creative, healthy lifestyles, what we call it. We're big on you know, utilizing your health and, and maintaining your mental health and the the way that helps you be more creative and, and you know, have a better impact in the world. And we love to talk to other founders and other companies about, you know, how they create culture, whether it's around health or um, and, and how you see things, whether it be work-life balance. So do you mind sharing a bit about yourself or, or Wybot and, and how you're tackling um, that kind of thing? You know, it's it's super interesting because um, when we designed Wirebot, when we put it together, there was this really uh, fascinating yin and yang element to what Wirebot is. So we've got uh, my co-founder, who's our CTO, who brings a lot of IQ to the game. And I actually bring a lot of EQ to the game. And the way that we've engineered this company is to celebrate a very high performance culture Essentially, everything's determined by your by your input and your results and all of that. But at the same time, we've kind of matched that energy with an EQ game where we've essentially, again, we expect a lot of our people, but we expect that they expect a lot from us too. And we're actually there for them. So some of our, some of our employees are in high stress situations. And um, definitely. My my Discord is on twenty four seven. They can reach out. They can wake me up if they want, um, and and just cool. reach out. Let me know what's going on. Um, we're always there to help them out. You know, no matter what. Um, so where it, it's interesting, um, where we've become almost extremely people, like people obsessed without people centric. Love that without having a culture that was defined around that. It was more just of this like necessity of having really high performance people and trying to check them uh, in this organization. So that's one thing, but that- I love that. Of- that's so okay. cool. And also it sounds like you're really digging into the essence of the founders as well. And the more you can dig into those, that, you know, that power that, that the founders have and the yin yang and accentuate that and develop that into like a, a company-wide culture, I think that's a really powerful way to think and build a company. It, it carries through, not just for the- because it's authentic, right? You're digging into your authentic sort of superpowers and balance, and that's cool. It carries through, yeah, again, not only just for the team, but it carries through to our product and when we sell because... Oh, our- nice. That's cool. That's cool to hear. That's true, man. Like, it does carry through to the product. That's, that's awesome. We've got, a, we've got a piece of technology that is, that is it's extremely high tech. Um, it's a voice AI with automation in it and a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> But, but we're actually there. Our, our tool is actually designed to uplift the way that people work, right? So our why really does extend to people. We're using technology to help people in a way that's never happened before. And so th- we really love the fact that this kind of um, this kind of energy actually travels through from both the founders all the way through the team into the way that we sell. We love that that is this there's this one message, one vibe one kind of direction and that actually creates a very stable a very holistic environment to work in even though everyone's everywhere we actually feel really united and wow. that's that's uh, so cool mate one of the best founder chats i've had that is such an awesome <laughs> thing to finish on like that was such a good vibe um really really um doing that and very impressed so you know ultra impressed with everything you said and um uh, yeah i'm sure people are going to learn a lot from that hopefully people are still here uh, but 
Amazing. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, we are, do have to wrap it up. I'm definitely going to hit you up to catch up in Miami at some point. But um, yeah, that was awesome. Thanks, man. I had so much fun, man. <laughs> <laughs>